Thing. Now, Ali Dinawade is the founder on, and CEO of Elwane PTY Limited, which is a data service company specializing and providing consultation mainly in data science and research. The team at Elwane say they have been forecasting South Africa's COVID-19 new cases and deaths with accuracy. Now, listen to this, the prediction of about 90%. Now, just last night... Ali, I spoke to, and he said, look, there's new data that has just come in, and particular interest for South Africans would be data relating to the possibility of a second wave of COVID-19 infections in the country. The CEO, Ali Dinawadi, joins me now. Ali, welcome to the Agenda on SABC News Channel. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us. I guess maybe the question is, let's start right there to the top of that question. Tell us a bit more about your work and how, how have you been able to come up with 90% prediction outcomes? Thank you very much, and um, good morning to the viewers. Well, um, one of the, the work that we do, we really just um, collect data and analyze it. So um, first of all, just to make a few corrections, we are on 75% accuracy and perhaps not 90%. Uh, apologies, apologies. So really, we've been um, uh, collecting data, more specifically for this, um, coronavirus, we've been collecting data from the World Health Organization, and we have been um, doing a few forecasting and predictions. And um, in a nutshell, yeah, that's what we've been doing so far. Mm, apologies for that 90%. It was a high score, but, you know, I'd like to have 90% at school one day. But let's speak about those numbers. How many, uh, what have been some of the observations and trends you've been able to predict during the particular lockdown? Maybe take us uh, from the hard lockdown to where we are now at level one. Okay. Well, look, um, in the past, on the first, um, when we had the first wave, we have observed that uh, the trends has been constant initially for uh, at least a, a period of two months. Then after the second month, there was a shoot up, you know, and that's when the, um, the, that's when the new cases actually came to its peak. And we've observed as well that the shoot up that happened was from the fact that alcohol was reinstated, you know, and that is actually what uh, caused a shoot up and it was in an extremely um, high and steep um, of the um, of the rates that was going up. And then after the alcohol uh, ban was, um, after the alcohol ban was um, lifted, yeah. you know, then I'm sorry, reinstated then um, what happened was the, the numbers dropped and it's dropped uh, significantly. Mm -hmm. And then what we're seeing right now is that um, uh, the fact that alcohol was, um, was re-established or rather reinstated, the numbers are, uh, are at a constant rate again. So that's a bit worried because if... Um, there's a deja vu, you know, from what happened initially, then um, we could be in big trouble. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Speaking about deep trouble, and, and I guess that's where my next question comes in. We've seen countries like Spain close bars already because there's spikes in their infections. We've seen countries like the United Kingdom also reintroduce lockdowns. South Africans would not want to go back to a hard lockdown. You say the numbers are constant. We're averaging just over 1,000 numbers over the past couple of weeks ago of infections, 40 deaths overnight. What are the numbers telling you from what you correlated last night? When and will we expect a second wave in South Africa? And a lot of people are saying could be even worse than the original wave. Well, as far as the second wave, uh, second wave it really depends, huh? You know, if we do have a scientific solution towards this um, uh, pandemic, you know, not just any scientific uh, solution, but uh, approved scientific solution, then it is very unlikely that we would have a, uh, a second wave. However, based on the um, um, forecast and the analysis we've done, we should be expecting a second wave. And this second wave, we should be expecting it from December, and it's going to 
uh, trend until end of uh, January. Mm. So, um, but again, you know, um, every good mathematical forecast, you know, uh, or good forecasting mo uh, models needs to have errors. So we could be um, wrong in expecting a new wave because people are wearing um, uh, face masks, people are uh, social distancing, and people are um, adhering to the rules. Mm. But the probability that we are wrong is approximately 20%. So it's not a good bet to see that we are wrong. In fact, um, we should actually be um, expecting a, um, a second wave. And as I mentioned earlier on that, you know, initially before we had the first wave, the, the rate was constant and then it shot. Yeah. And we've, in our study, we've discovered that the reason for the shoot was alcohol. And bear in mind that alcohol was reinstated. So this means that uh, if we um, observe the old trend and then we apply it into this new trend, yeah. we will definitely have a, a, a spike. And this spike is uh, really um, what we could refer to yeah. as the second wave. Yeah. So in our opinion, Aliun, we think that there will be a, a second wave and we are confident that there's a very high co uh, probability yeah. that it's going to happen and we're expecting it in early December and we're expecting it to trend up to late January. Whew. Ali Dinawade, CEO of Alun P2I Limited. Bad, bad news, in fact. Well, but anyway, thank you very much indeed for joining us using big data to try and uh, well, play a balancing act with the coronavirus and see what the numbers speak to us. Ali, there, Dinawade, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us.